before we install the PCIe SATA expansion card, I wanted to show you what the motherboard looked like. And this motherboard has four extra PCIe slots besides the one where the graphics card is. The graphics card uses a PCIe 16X and there's also another 4X slot and three 1X slots. So using the PCIe 1X card that we have, you're not really going to benefit from putting in a 4X slot, but you can. And there are faster cards out there. So if you need more throughput, you can choose one of those. I just thought it might be helpful to see where these could go. And you see with the little red arrows there, those are some of your options on this particular motherboard, but they are clearly labeled on motherboards. So you can take a look, see where it is on your motherboard and choose one of those slots. All right, now you can see the slots and we're going to go ahead and stick this six port SATA card in. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting these wires in there, but I'm trying to put them back where they were before. I'm not sure that it matters. Uh, I'm just trying to put it back how it was, but I think that the drives would be recognized properly regardless. I was just worried that they might not be mapped correctly. But it's pretty tight getting them in there with all of my thumbs as you can see, it's a little bit of a struggle for me. But you do want to take your time. And part of it is I have the cables managed already. And so there's just not a lot of play there. If you were doing it the first time, then it would be a lot easier. There we go. Getting them in there a little better now. Maybe I need more powerful glasses. Okay, we're getting there. Now we're going to drop it down in there and put it in the slot. And we're going to put it in the 4X slot. It's not really going to give us any benefits because it is a 1X card. So... But we're not going to add another graphics card. It's just a server, so it'll work just fine there. Now, I had a little bit of trouble getting it down in there, and you really don't want to force these things. It's just not sure what trouble I'm having, but it's, it's not, not seating properly. Almost got it, but still don't feel like it's in there right, so maybe we'll give it one more shot. No, still a little wiggly. Let's try one more time. Really important before you fire up your computer that you make sure that these are in there properly. There we go. Nice pop clicked right in that time. So let's check everything else. Make sure we got it all in there. And there you go. That's all you got to do to install it now. We're going to talk about the hows and whys and my experiences with this server and using these SATA expansion cards. Hi, in a previous video, 
I discuss why and how to install a PCIe SATA expansion card. The cards I installed were on this system. I installed two four-port SATA cards. Later, I did a follow-up to that video where I took out the two four-ports and installed one six-port because I was having issues with that arrangement. I don't know that it was the four-port cards, but it's possible later I started having issues with the six port card that I used to replace them. So it made me wonder, you know, was it the expansion cards or it was some other issue? So what I did was I swapped out the, or I added another four port card. So I kept the six port card and I added a four port card and I left two SATA connections on the motherboard and put all the rest of them on the SATA expansion cards. Now, it was just testing to see if I could get it to stop dropping the drives. And so far, it's worked. I've been using it in that configuration for a little over a year now, and I've had no further troubles. So I'm not sure exactly why. But if you have a similar circumstance where you have a lot of say a lot of SATA drives and maybe an expansion card and it's still dropping them, you might want to consider doing what I did and just moving the all of the drives to the SATA cards. Now I didn't remove all of them. The operating system will not boot off of a SATA expansion card. So I left the SSD, which houses the operating system, and one other drive on the motherboard. And I have had no problems. So we're going to take a look at that. And I just want to show you what I did and explain the reasoning behind it as I just did. So let's just take a look down into the case and see what we got. All right, here's the case. And you'll see this is a Corsair case. It has a total of nine fans. There are three fans on the front, two on the top, one on the back, one on the bottom, and when I put the cover back on it, there are two more on the side. So that gives me a lot of airflow, which is really nice. Um, cable management is very important for me on a server like this because I don't want any vortexes building up in here. I want everything to be nice and smooth and get good airflow, and that has also worked. So I'm getting good airflow, and this case is working out really good. I'll go over some of the things real quickly about this build in case you didn't watch the other video, but you might want to look at that one, how and why to install a PCIe SATA expansion car. Check out my videos. You'll see it. So this is an old motherboard with, uh, uh, it's an AMD Phenom 955 processor. By no means is it uh, high powered and you don't really want a high powered processor on a server like this. High power, more energy. Now this isn't a low power, but it's not super high power. You'll see here we've got 16 gigabytes of memory, which should be plenty for a server like this. Over here we have six drives, and here I replaced three of the five and a quarter drives with this adapter that turns it, these three five and a quarters into five three and a half inch drives. So if you wanna take a look at that, you're gonna have to bear with me one second, and we'll see if we can get a another angle on that over there. So let's see, view three. Okay, there it is. So you see over here, we have five drives. Now there is one caveat here. This top drive, it's a slim drive. For some reason, it's just not enough space for five full-size drives. For me, it's not a problem because this one terabyte slim drive is perfect for me because it mirrors another one terabyte drive 
And I've always done that because it's my work drive and it's a, just a, a backup and uh, something I can change out real quick if I need to. So let's go back to looking down in the case. There we are. And we'll take a, a more close up look of the expansion cards down here. You can see one of them really good, and you can see the other one okay. So there we are, and right here is a six-port expansion card. Right beside it, you can't really see it over here, but you can kind of see the top of it. There's a four-port card, and the six-port runs to the five expansion or the five bays in the adapter that I showed you with one stray drive that I've attached the SATA cable and that goes behind the case to the drives on the right side. So as I said, if you're having trouble with your setup and you're using an expansion card and you're dropping drives, unexplained drops of your drives, you really might want to consider doing what I've done, and that is abandoning as many of the SATA ports on the motherboard as possible and just switching that all in here to these SATA expansion cards. It, it runs plenty fast for my backup needs. I've never had any problems. I, I'm not concerned with speed because it's just a backup. And they back up from this computer, they back up from my main work computer, my backup work computer, and uh, all of my family is on a different network, but they have access to this system too. So I have access to this system from two different networks, and my home office is on one network. My family is on the other network, but they all have access to this particular server, but they only have access to one drive. They have no need to do anything on any of the other drives. I don't want them in there making mistakes, messing up. So they each have a folder here on this drive and on this server, and everybody's happy. They get to back up all their stuff, free up space on their computers and it's been working really good so hope you enjoyed this video i hope it's helpful for you if you're one of those people who are dropping drives intermittently for no reason and you just can't figure out why and then you gotta i can't even reboot the system when it does that when it would do that i would have to completely shut down my server wait a second restart it well you should wait at least a minute and then you restart it and then whoa the drives would show back up but it was just very frustrating because some of the drives they are used for, well they're all used for backup but some of them have like my um, surveillance system backs up to them i have ip cameras also running besides the surveillance system and they back up directly to one of the drives and to have them dropping is just not acceptable. So there you go. I'll just go over it again really quick because it's, it's a good build. One of the things I didn't mention is if you look here at this graphics card, it's a very low powered graphics card. So you see it right here. This is an NVIDIA Quadro 400. It doesn't require any cable connections, and there's a reason for that. You want something very low powered when it's running 24 7. So, something, just one more thing I left out that you should keep in mind good airflow, 16 gigabytes of RAM is usually enough. You don't want like a really high powered processor, and this one uses a little more than I would like, but I already had it. So, yeah. And then, you want to have as many drives as you need and a little bit of extra just in case. This particular build has 105 terabytes cur currently. 
not including the operating system. So it's plenty for me right now, but I'll be able to upgrade because some of the drives are not very large and I'll swap them out later for um, 18 or 20 terabyte drives. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. And if you're dropping drives, I hope this will work for you. So like this video, subscribe to my channel, and look forward to showing you many more tips like this that can help le helpfully solve some of your major issues. This was a major issue issue for me. So hopefully this can help you and hopefully some of my other tips can help you too. Have a good day.